In the day two notes, we're going to be proving a quadrilateral as a parallelogram using coordinate geometry and then taking a look at two column proofs with parallelograms. So to start, we're going to be taking a look at those proofs in the coordinate plane. So this is proving using coordinate geometry. Uh, and remember the method is to state the formula, graph the polygon, and then do the calculations and write your conclusion. To prove or show that a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, you can use one of the following methods. And it's not showing, um, but right here it should say in your notes, uh, your choice. So let's take, if you have a highlighter, and let's highlight these four methods. So that's where the bullets are. Okay, the first method. The first method is to show that both pair of opposite sides are parallel. So to show that two sides are parallel, we're going to use the slope formula. Okay, we use the slope formula to show that both pair of opposite sides have the same slope. A second method, we can show that both pair of opposite sides are congruent. And remember, to show congruency, we use the distance formula. So the method used the distance formula to show that both pairs of opposite sides have the same distance or length. The third method is to show that one pair. So the other two involve both, but this third method is you can just look at one pair of opposite sides and show that they are both parallel and congruent. So we would use slope and distance formulas. And last, we can show that the diagonals bisect each other. So we should say, cross that out, the each should come after the line. Bisect each other. That's a typo. And to show that the diagonals bisect each other, we're going to use the midpoint formula. So use the midpoint formula and show that the diagonals share the same midpoint. If the diagonals share the same midpoint, then they must bisect each other. Okay, so let's take a look at the first proof. So the vertices of quadrilateral DEFG are given using coordinate geometry. So again, they state that to give you a hint that we need to use the distance, midpoint, or slope form. So using coordinate geometry show that the quadrilateral DEFG is a parallelogram. And the use of the set of axes, axes below is optional. Remember, no, you want to graph that. So I'm specifying that we're going to use the midpoint formula. So if you look above, we use the midpoint formula to show that the diagonals bisect each other. Okay. So we're going to find the midpoint of the diagonals. So one diagonal is GE, and the other diagonal is DF. So let's now calculate the midpoint. I like to set up my parentheses with the denominators of 2 to start. And then go up and look at the coordinates. So I'm going to add the 2x values divided by 2 and add the 2y values divided by 2. So for GE, the 2x values are negative 1 and 1. So be negative 1 plus 1 over 2. And the y values, 4 plus 6 over 2. For DF, the x values are negative 2 and 2, and the y values are 2 and 8. So now doing the calculations, negative 1 plus 1 is 0, 0 divided by 2 is 0, 
4 plus 6 is 10, divided by 2 is 5. And the next one, negative 2 plus 2 is also 0, divided by 2 is 0. And then 2 plus 8 is 10, divided by 2 is 5. So good. They have the same midpoints. Now we just need to write up our conclusion, which I suggested before the since then, therefore. So since, what did we just calculate, or what were the calculations we made, and what did we discover? So since, whoops, I don't need the comma after since. Okay. Since the diagonals share the same midpoint or have the same, uh, same midpoint, then, so because they share the same midpoint, what does that tell me? And it also should highlight the property of a parallelogram. So then they, meaning the diagonals, bisect each other. Therefore, go back up to your problem. What were we trying to show or prove? Uh, quadrilateral. DEFG is a parallelogram. And you can even take your ruler, since you have it graphed, I would always double check that your calculations came out correct. So I'm going to draw a diagonal DE, or DF rather, and GE, and take a look at that point right here, which is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we are correct with our calculations. All right, number two. The vertices of quadrilateral ABCD are given. Using coordinate geometry, we want to show that it is a parallelogram. So to do this, we're going to use distance this time. So going back to the first page, we use distance to show that both pair of opposite sides are parallel. So I need to calculate the slope of BC and AD to show that they're parallel, and then the slopes of AB, or I'm sorry, the distance. Oh, um, we're not showing parallel. Scratch that. We're using distance to show that BC is congruent to AD and AB is congruent to CD. So sorry about that. Distance formula, not slope. All right, so I'm going to look at the distance of AB. And right underneath it, I'm going to put the distance of CD because they should come out to be the same. So subtracting the x values for A, B. 2 minus 1 is 1 squared. Plus 5 minus 2, 3 squared. So 1 plus 9 is the square root of 10. For CD, that would work out to be negative 1 squared plus negative 3 squared, which is also the square root of 10. Good. So that works out. AB is uh, congruent to CD. Now the distance of BC. Subtracting, we get 3 squared plus 2 squared, which is the square root of 13. And then last, the distance of AD. Subtracting, we get 3 squared plus 2 squared, which is also the square root of 13. So now my conclusion. Well, I calculate the distance of both pair of opposite sides. And I show that they have the same distance. So I want to write that up. So since the distances or lengths of both pair of opposite sides, since I'm talking about lengths or distance, I want to state that they're equivalent. So since both pair of opposite sides have the same length, then they are congruent. So then both pair, both again, of opposite sides are congruent. Therefore, quadrilateral ABCD is a parallelogram.
All right, last one using coordinate geometry. So this one does not have a picture, and that is because um, it's algebraic. So I'm just going to sketch a parallelogram off to the side and label it Q, R, S, T. Okay, and we're going to use slope. Well, if we're trying to use slope to show it's a parallelogram, we have to, share, we have to show that both pair of opposite sides are parallel. So we want to show that QT is parallel to RS and QR is parallel to TS. So we're going to use the slope formula uh, to calculate the slope of all four sides. So QR and um, TS are right uh, opposite each other. So I'm going to do their slopes first. So QR my slope formula is 0 minus b over 0 minus a, which is negative b over negative a, and negative over negative is positive. So just b over a. Ts, the slope is b minus 0 over a plus c minus c. So we end up getting b over a. Good. That's what we want to happen. And the other pair is QT and RS. So for RS, our slope is 0 minus 0 and C minus 0. We get 0 over C and 0 divided by anything is 0. And then QT, we have, uh, let's see, our slope is B minus B over A plus C minus A, which is 0 over C again, or 0. Good. That's what I wanted to happen. So my write-up, I'm going to say since the slopes of both pair of opposite sides are equal, Equal slopes mean we have parallel sides. So then both pair of opposite sides are parallel. And quadrilateral QRST uh, is a parallelogram. Oh, I want to say quadrilateral QRST. All right, on to number four, which is a multiple choice. So I'm going to take a moment and draw quadrilateral ABCD. Okay. Oh, and then I'm going to draw in the diagonals AC and BD. Is that what answer choice number one is referring to? Okay, which information is not sufficient to prove a parallelogram? Well, if I show that AC, which are the diagonals, the diagonals bisect each other, no, nope, that's one of the ways to do it. AB is congruent to CD, so if I show AB congruent to CD and BC congruent to AD, no, nope, that is a way. Uh, if both pair of opposite sides are congruent, it's a parallelogram. Three. A, B congruent to C, D. So again, this congruent to this. And then also that A, B is parallel to C, D. Nope, that is a method that one pair of opposite sides is both congruent and parallel. So last, um, so here in pink it says to show that A, B is congruent to C, D. But then B, C parallel to A, B. If you want to do congruent and parallel, you have to use the same side. So this is not sufficient. Okay, now for our two-column proofs. 
So let's look at our, I'm actually going to make this small. No, I guess I'll go back and forth. I think I was going to make it smaller, but um, I'll leave it the size it is. So given parallelogram ABCD with diagonal AC drawn, DE intersects AC at E, and BF intersects AC at F. AE is congruent to FC. Prove these triangles congruent. So the first thing I'm going to do is highlight those two congruent triangles. So ADE is this one right here, congruent to CEB this one right here. And notice that everything is written down for the givens in step one. All right, let's take a minute and mark what's congruent. So AF congruent to AE, or no, A to E congruent to F to C. Ah, so there's this overlap right here. So I want to use reflexive on that. Or actually, I don't because that's the side of the triangle, even though there is the overlap. Because usually we do, we can get rid of that. But if I know that A to E, so this whole side is congruent to that whole side, F to C. So we're good. That's the side of our triangle. All right, on to something else. So given a parallelogram, well, remember to prove our triangle is congruent, we use side, 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 angle, side, angle, side, angle, 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 side, and the hypotenuse leg. Well, another property of a parallelogram is that opposite sides are congruent. So I'm going to say that AD is congruent to CB. That would be um, another S. So that's number two. AD congruent to CB. And that's because opposite sides of a parallelogram are congruent. And then going back up, is there any way to get DE congruent to FB? No, there's not. So I need an angle. So in order to get congruent angles, remember we look at the parallel lines cut by a transversal. So my line three is also going to be that AD is parallel to CB so that this angle right here, I'm going to call that angle one, is congruent to angle two because they would be alternate interior. And then the triangles are congruent by side angle side, side angle side on the right. So first we have to state that the sides are parallel. So AD is parallel to CB. And then I can state that in step four, that angle one is congruent to angle two. So AD is parallel to CB because opposite sides of a parallelogram are parallel. And then four, the parallel sides give me two congruent angles, and that's because if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, so we've used this many times before, then alternate interior angles are congruent. And then last, the triangles are congruent. So the proof statement was triangle A, D, E, congruent to triangle B, F, C. And that was because of side, angle, side. All right, number six. In parallelogram A, B, C, D shown to the right, we have diagonals A, C, and B, D drawn to intersect at E. Prove that angle ACD, so this angle here, is congruent to CAB, this angle here. Well, that's easy. 
Um, that's just because CD is parallel to AB, and then those are alternate interior. So this is just a three-step proof. So number two would be CD parallel to AB, and then number three, we're done. Angle ACD is congruent to angle CAB. So super short proof. And back to number two, CD is parallel to AB because opposite sides of a parallelogram are parallel. Whoops, let's flip that up. They kind of all went together. I'm gonna pick up my pen. And then those parallel lines gave us congruent alternate interior angles. So three, if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal. Then, alternate angles are congruent. All right, we have one last proof, which actually has two statements that we need to prove to be true. So let's take a look at this last question. So given parallelogram A and D R with A, W, and D, E bisecting segments N, W, D, and R, E, A at the points W and E respectively, prove that the triangles A and W, so it's this triangle right here, is congruent to DRE. Okay, well let's start with um, the statement that DE is, in, is bisecting those two segments at W and E. So if DE bisects the first one, NWD, That means number two, that um, NW is congruent to N or WD, and also we have AE and RE congruent. Okay, so that would be step two. So let's start from W. So WD is congruent to WN. And then ER is congruent to EA. It's because of that statement in the given. So number two is that a segment bisector divides a segment into two congruent segments. Okay, but I also know that this whole side AR is congruent to this whole side NW because it's a parallelogram. Okay, so I'm going to state number three is that A to R is congruent to N to D. And what I also need um, is since I'm stating that that pair of opposite sides are congruent, why don't I also state this one now because that's the side of those two triangles in blue. So not only is AR um, congruent to ND, but we also have AN congruent to RD for the same reason. So that's because opposite sides of a parallelogram are congruent. All right, so back to AR, I just want to highlight pink. Back to these two sides though. If those two sides are congruent to start and then I cut them in half, I'm going to go back and add two dashed lines, then all of the halves must be congruent. 
So I know, okay, that this side, which is what I need, ER, is congruent to NW, because those are the two sides of the triangle. So step four, I'm going to put ER is congruent to NW. I can write the others, but that's the only thing um, that I need, okay? Uh, so step four, and remember that's because halves of congruent segments are congruent. All right, so now remember our two triangles, so I'm going to highlight those again. Highlighter, there we go. So that's this triangle right here, and then this triangle right here. And now we have two sides, okay? I'm going to put a number one right here and a number two right here. Now those angles are congruent because they're opposite angles of a parallelogram, and then the triangles would be congruent by side angle side, side angle side. So number five, because I have to move it up, is angle one congruent to angle two, and then six, the triangles A and W, that first statement in our prove statements is congruent to triangle D, R, E. So the angles are congruent because opposite angles of a parallelogram are congruent. And then six, the triangles are congruent by side angle side. Now back to that last statement, and let's use purple. We're going to prove that quadrilateral A, W, D, E is a parallelogram. So A, W, D, E is there in white. Now it turns out I actually do need um, this side, W, D, congruent to A, E after all. So I'm going to add that back up into the, for the reason of halves of congruent segments are congruent. I'm going to add that to line four. So again, that is A, E congruent to R, E. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I got to look up at my picture. I can't see it. A, E congruent to W, D. So whenever you discover that you need something else for the same reason, feel free to go back and add it. All right. Um, so I have one pair of opposite sides congruent. That's this AE and WD. I need both. Now if I know that, or if I can get those two sides congruent, then both pair of opposite sides are congruent, and boom, it's a parallelogram. And these two sides are congruent, one, two, three, four, because the triangles are congruent. And any corresponding part of congruent triangles are congruent um, by CPCTC. So last, we need number seven. Those two sides are DE is congruent to AW. That was by CPCTC. And then A is that second proof statement, uh, quadrilateral. AWDE is a parallelogram. And the reason, I'm going to do it in an if-then format. So if both pair of opposite sides of a quadrilateral are congruent, then it is a parallelogram.